Welcome to New Covenant Worship Center. We're so glad you could join us for praise and worship and for our service today. Isn't it great to come together just like this in this uncertain time, to have something certain to believe in? In the Bible, in Isaiah 40 and 31, it says, For those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. And today, if you're feeling faint, if you're feeling alone, if there's anything going on that's uncertain in your life, know that we're there with you, that Jesus is there with you. We invite you today to, to just sing along, to worship with us, and we have a special performance by Livewire, our dance and drama team, and we really hope that you enjoy. So go ahead, stand up, raise your hands, and let's praise the Lord this morning. give life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord, you give life.
king who conquered the grave. Worthy is the lamb who was slain. Worthy is the king who conquered the grave. Worthy is the lamb who was slain. Worthy.
Welcome back, Bishop James Marquis, New Covenant Worship Center. Glad that you're with us again today. All of New Covenant, glad that you're here. Pray that you're having a great, great day as we get started. Everyone is safe and well and happy and doing the things we're supposed to do. The joy of the Lord is our strength, and it's good to be in the house of the Lord today and together with the people of God, even though we may be socially distancing still at this point, it is good to be among God's people and know that we are uh, out there and, and ministering the Word of God and glad, so glad uh, that we're here. I want to just mention uh, as we get started today, we want to thank the Lord for His goodness and we want to mention all of those that uh, are still fighting uh, with this COVID-19 and not only those that are uh, afflicted by it, so many have been lost and we certainly are praying uh, for the families and the friends and all of those uh, that have been touched, uh, that death maybe has claimed uh, a loved one. We're certainly praying for them. God, uh, with your grace and your mercy, comfort them, Lord, as only you can. For those that may be still fighting it in a hospital somewhere or at home, recovering, whatever that it is, God, that you would touch them and that they would continue to recover. For those of us, Lord, that you have mercifully spared and mightily by your blood protected, Lord, and, and, and kept us from this. We thank you for that, Lord. We give you praise for it. Let that, that blessing and that protection continue. So it is still good to be in the house of the Lord. It's good to be among the people of God. It's good to be together uh, with your family and friends and with your church, whether you're recording or whether you're doing Facebook Live or whether you're doing drive-in church or parking lot church, whatever that you're doing, we praise God that the word of the Lord is going forward. God is so good to us, and we thank Him for that. I believe uh, that the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, at least in America over the last month, has probably reached more people than it's ever reached before in its history. I believe that, and, and I expect that that's going to continue even as we... Uh, begin to see things return uh, to whatever the new normal is going to be. I believe that we still have a lot of things that have begun during this time uh, that are very positive, and we're going to see that go forward. So we thank the Lord for that. Again, welcome. I'm glad that you're here. We pray that somewhere uh, in this message today that the Lord will touch your heart, that He'll bless you, that He'll comfort you, that He'll give you whatever that it is uh, that you need. And we certainly want to be uplifting, and we want to be a blessing to everyone because God is good. Amen. So if we can get to the Word of God uh, today, uh, I've been thinking about uh, how powerful our words are. And I, I spend a lot of time on words. I spend a lot of time uh, in, in faith, a lot of time in the power of God, uh, dealing with that, a lot of time dealing with prayer. Um, I, don't, I don't have a favorite topic of the Bible. 
Everything that God puts on my heart and I begin to study becomes a favorite very quickly to me. But there are things that are vitally important that we need to understand. And so I was thinking again that maybe there's a need uh, to remind us how powerful our words are. Um, I don't think it's a mistake. Uh, and uh, certainly when we bring something forward, uh, we're not bringing it for contention or debate. I won't debate with anyone. I uh, find no need in it. Uh, I know what the Word of God says, and if it's in the Word of God, and God has, has put His uh, His blessing on His Word, uh, and it's there, then I'm going to speak it, I'm going to preach it, and I'm, I'm going to say it, uh, you know, whether it makes people happy or whether it makes them not too happy doesn't really make any difference. We certainly aim to please, and we want people to be pleased, but I want you to know uh, that there are some, some things in the Word of God we can spend a lot of time on and never exhaust them. I, I don't think you can exhaust anything in the Word of God because uh, God is, is inexhaustible. So <clears throat> I was thinking about how powerful words are. And I, I don't want to get into a, a long uh, dissertation uh, about that in, in a sense, but I want to tell you that I, I believe from the Word of God and I believe by the Spirit of God, and I believe by what we have experienced in the Lord, that it is proper to say that God's Word has activated this world. The world is Word-activated. Life is Word-activated. Death is Word-activated. God chose words to bring to pass everything that He has brought to pass. He did not just use thought. We know that Jesus Christ created all things. The Bible says so. We know that by His Spirit, He created all things. We know uh, that without Jesus, there was nothing created that has been created. But we have to understand that it's vitally, I think it's vitally important for us to understand that God used words. He could have done anything that he wanted to do, but he used words. And I want to talk to you about that uh, a little while today. And we, we, we release our faith in words. Uh, but I think more what I feel like talking about is how that our world and what God wants to do spiritually and physically is word activated. And I know that people can become contentious about that, but it, it matters what you say. And it matters why you say what you say. And it matters especially if you realize that what we are to say is the Word of God. Words become and, and are very powerful. You can build someone up or you can tear them down. The Word activates things. God's world that He created, this world that He so loved, that He sent His only begotten Son into to, to, to die for us and to raise again from the dead for us, to reconcile us to Himself. This God that has done all these things put this world into order with words. So I want to take you there for just a little bit. Everything in this life and everything in this world is word activated. I know that uh, that is uh, that that's a mouthful. Uh, no pun intended. Words, no, no pun intended. It, 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 that's that's a mouthful to say that. But everything in this life and everything in this world is word activated. It's word activated. Go with me, if you will, to Genesis chapter one. <clears throat> I want to start there, and I want to just build a premise before that we really talk about the more important things of what we speak and how important words are in our life every day. Genesis chapter 1, the first four verses. The Bible records for us, in the beginning, God. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. The next 
words that I'm going to say are very important. Then God said. God didn't merely think. God didn't merely move His hands or, 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 or put action to it. He said. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. God said, let there be light, and there was light. Now, I don't want to get off on a rabbit trail here, but I want you to know that when that light appeared, He had not yet created the sun and the moon. God spoke very powerfully. God said, let there be light. Instantaneously, at God's word, there was light. Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. God spoke, and then He saw. God spoke, let there be light, and there was light, and God saw that it was good. God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. Nine times in Genesis 1, we read, and God said. Nine times in Genesis 1 alone, we read, and God said. And then every time that God said, whatever God said happened, whatever He spoke, the words that He spoke happened according to the record that we have that is His Word. Nine times. God said it, it happened, and then God saw it. It is important because that's a pattern of beginnings for us. God spoke, and then He saw. God spoke, and then He saw. And with God, when God spoke and He saw, it was good. It is important to understand that God has created power, that God created everything by words. He, he, enact, he activated everything in this world by words, and we're still looking for a word of God. We come to church to hear the word of God. We not only want God to speak to us in His Word, we want to hear Him when we're praying, when we're seeking His face. In, in, in the uh, Spirit-filled church, in the mighty Pentecostal church and the Spirit-filled church, we look for a word from God. We want God to speak to us because we believe that God is still speaking. We're hungry for a word, not only the established Word, the Bible, to read and to understand and to interpret and to decipher and and to get in and to be led by God and the Spirit. But we want that personal interaction from Him because God speaks. And when God speaks, something happens. When God tells you you're blessed, you're blessed. If God tells you you're in trouble, you better start repenting. When God says something, it happens. Nine times in the book of Genesis, the first chapter, the Bible says, and God said. When God said it happened, when it happened, God saw that it was good. Notice the pattern. God spoke, God saw, and it was good. I want you to know that that's not always the case with man. We get ourselves in trouble when we don't understand the order of God. We don't understand how powerful words are. We don't understand God's way of doing things that God spoke. God said, God spoke, He said, then He saw, and it was good. When we're dealing with life, dealing with many things in life. Most of us do not deal with things that we speak first and then see, and it's usually good. What we mostly do is we look and see something, and then we comment on it. We see something, and then we comment on it. That's not God's way. God did not see it. I know that in His mind, in His, in his heart, God saw and he spoke from his heart what he wanted to see and that came to pass. But the important thing is that the pattern is that God spoke and when God spoke, it activated something Then God saw. He spoke and then he saw. With you and I, so many times in life, we look first, we see. I'm not currently in the state of uh, Missouri, but I know that they say a lot of people from Missouri, you know, it's the show me state, you know, they, they, they got a seat or they're not going to believe it. Some of us get kind of like doubting Thomas in the Word of God if we're not careful. Unless I see the print of the nails in his hands, unless I see the wound in his side, I won't believe. We, we, we want to see something before that we believe it, but that's not how God does things. God does things in a word way. God does things by speaking. God speaks 
then sees, and then it becomes good with God. When we follow God's pattern, we become people that speak. But first, we're in prayer with God. We understand what God wants. We speak, and then we see. Instead of being the kind of people that see something, my Lord, look at what's going on in the world. Look at this one died. Or look, look, and that one's got sick. And then we start talking about that. And by and large, we're not talking good. Let's look at another example to kind of prove what I'm talking about. If you want to go to Luke chapter 4, verses 4 through 6, <clears throat> that will take us to the next point in being word activated and following God's pattern. Luke chapter 4, verses 4 through 6. And man, we're making a big jump. We're going from the first book of the first covenant to the second book in the, in the second covenant, the new covenant, that's a big jump, but it, but it contains the point that I want to talk to you about. Luke chapter 4, verses 4 through 6, the Bible says, But Jesus answered him, saying, this is during the time when the devil is, 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 is tempting the Lord and the Lord is dealing with the temptation. But Jesus answered him, saying, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. That's important. Then the devil, taking him, Jesus, up on a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said to him, All this authority I will give you and their glory, for this has been delivered to me, and I will give it to whoever I, I, give it to whoever I wish. Understand this that we need to be very careful when we let the enemy show us. When you're dealing with God, God will speak and then let you see. I will know the things that are motivating your life is because God spoke to you and now you see what God said. Or is it this other example? The devil, his pattern was he took Jesus to the top of the temple during the temptation and he showed him something and then tried to get him to comment about it. But I want you to know that Jesus said, oh, no, that's not going to work because man's not living by sight. We're not living by sight. We live by faith. I'm not going to be moved by what I see, but man shall live by every word of God. I want you to know that a word's not a word till you speak it. It's important that we speak the word. Be careful what you let the enemy show you. You don't have to be careful when God tells you something. You don't have to be careful when God tells you something. When God tells you something, you will see it. It will come to pass. I want you to know that when God tells you something, you hear a word of God, whether you picked up the Bible and God brought it to life in your life and you were reading and you thought, my God, I know I've read that several times, but Lord, this something just jumped off the page to me. God, something, when God brings a word alive in your life, it's important because the word is how God deals with us. God speaks. And then you see, God speaks, and then you see. When you become motivated by the enemy, and maybe you don't even know it, if he tried it on Jesus, he'll certainly try it on you. If he tried it on Jesus, he'll try it on you. He'll try it on me. Just the same as God never changes, I want you to know the enemy never changes either. What God has done from the beginning, he's doing now, and he'll continue to do. He is God. He is the Lord our God, and He does not change according to His Word. I want you to know the devil doesn't have a new trick. There's nothing new that he can do. He's doing the same things that he has always done, and because they keep working. But the devil is very much unlike God. He is completely opposite of God. God will speak to you and then let you see the results of the Word that He speaks to you if you become in tune with what the Spirit is saying. The enemy will speak to you. Oh, you've got cancer. My God, you, you, you know, look at that. Oh, you've got that pain. One, you know, you, you've got something wrong. You know, I mean, you've, uh, maybe, maybe in the last few weeks, if we're being honest, somebody got up in the middle of the night, maybe they had a little stomach discomfort. Maybe they had a, a little trouble breathing. Maybe they had a cough all of a sudden. And the devil said, you've got it. You've got, you've got, that's it. That's COVID-19. You've got, it. I know that, you know, some of us are so super spiritual that we never get sick. And 
never have those kind of things going on. But I want you to know that there's probably not anybody, even those that didn't have anything. You had sinus infection, the pollen is up, my God. You know, the, the, the trees are, are throwing their, you know, their, 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 their blooms all over the place and things going on. The only thing you had was a little bit of sinus problem. The only thing you had was a little allergy going on. But the devil told you, you, you've got it, that's COVID. You know, the devil will, 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 will paint you a picture. And before that, not just speaking to you, but he'll start showing you all the things you're going to have to go through. Mike, he will show you things. Be careful what you let the devil put in your mind. Be careful what you let the devil show you because when you let the devil show you something and you begin to comment on what you see, it will turn out bad. When you hear God speak and then you see what God has spoken and you put your heart and your mind on the Word of God because the Word has life and it has power, then you live in the power of God. When you become the kind of person that allows what you see to influence what you say, you usually become very negative. I become very negative. Most of the time, the things that we see are lies. When, when Jesus told the enemy, when Jesus told the devil, why don't you just bow down before me and I'll give you all the kingdoms of this world because they've been delivered in, in, in my into my hand and all their glory, and I can give it to whoever I want. I want you to know that at that particular time, he had his hand on it through Adam's fall, but I want you to know he, the one thing he wasn't sure of, the one thing he didn't know was he was standing there talking to not only the man Christ Jesus, but the God-man Christ Jesus, who could have said, out front of his breath, don't worry about that devil, I already own all that. So when the devil shows you things, See, God speaks and then shows you. The devil shows you and then gets you to speak on it. Let's follow God's way. Let's follow God's way. Be cautious what you let the enemy show you because as Christians, we are told in 2 Corinthians 5 and 7 that we walk by faith and not by sight. The devil showed him all the kingdoms of the world. It was a temptation. Uh, what's the devil showing you? What's the enemy showing you? What kind of depression is coming? Let me, let me tell you something. When God tells you something, he'll remove depression from your life. You won't need a handful of pills. You won't need some psychotic diagnosis. When, when God begins to speak in your life, through the printed Word of God or by His mighty Holy Ghost, God relieves depression. When the devil starts showing you things, it brings depression and oppression and aggravation and frustration. I want you to know that when God speaks His Word to you and then allows you to see the glory of the Word that He's spoken to you, when God speaks to my heart and then allows me to see the glory of the Word that He's spoken, it's liberating, it is uplifting, it is, it is satisfying, it is blessing. When the enemy comes along, that's how you can tell the difference. When the enemy comes along, he'll show you trouble in your home, he'll show you trouble in your marriage, he'll show you trouble with your children, he'll show you trouble in your church, he'll show you trouble in the economy, he'll show you trouble with ever getting out of this mess we're in, and paints you a picture, gets you to look at it, and the next thing you know, you're like, oh my, I don't know what we're going to do. God, what are we going to do? Oh God, are we ever going to get back together? There are people out there tonight contemplating suicide because of something that the enemy has shown them, not because of a word that God has spoken to them. When God wants to reveal something to His people, when God wants to do something in this earth, He speaks and then we see it. When the enemy is involved, he wants to show you and then get you to speak on it. Remember that in 2 Corinthians 5, 7, the Bible says that we walk by faith and not by sight. Instead, the Bible tells us pleasantly that we will hear a word because we're God's word activated. God wants to speak a word to us. Words are powerful. We not only receive faith in words from the Word of God, but we release faith in words. If you're going to speak something, speak something in faith. Don't speak something negative, something, something, 
uh, the downgrading. And, and I've never seen a time where people want to, to run their mouth about the church next door or, or whether someone, you know, whether their video was up to snuff or whether somebody had drive-in church. My God, the word's being preached. Rejoice with everyone that's out there. Rejoice, Rejoice that the word of God is going forward. Well, I heard this and I heard that. You know what? Uh, don't pay attention to all that mess. We're to lift one another up and support one another and bless one another. Be careful because God said He wants to speak a word to us. He wants to get us in His word. He wants to get us in prayer. But God wants to speak a vital and living word to you that will activate your life, that will activate things in your life. Instead, we need to be very, very careful. The Bible says that your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. Whenever you turn to the right hand or whenever you turn to the left hand, that's Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 21. The Bible says that God, when he speaks to us, will cause us to hear a word. He'll cause us to hear a word. God's way is to speak His Word. He activates your life in faith by speaking His Word to you. He activates things in your life by speaking a word. I want you to know that God can tell the bill to be paid, but you've got to say, God, I believe you're paying this bill. God will tell you, I'm going to take you. Listen, He's taking care of us. God will cause us to hear a word. Be careful what you let come into your eyes. Be careful what you let the enemy show you that you don't begin to speak what you're seeing. I, I've been listening and, uh, you know, I, I want to know what's going on. I want to know how to conduct the church. I want to know when we can get back together. I want to know when people can go to the store normally again. I, I want to know all those things too. But in order to find that out, sometimes I have to listen to what's going on out there. But if I listen to everything that they're painting and portraying and I look at the graphs that they're putting up, and I listen to all the reports. It begins to paint a picture. I begin to begin to see with my eyes. I begin to think, oh my God, they've had this many deaths. And oh Lord, I heard about this. No, 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 no. Don't go by what you see. It's right there in front of you, Bishop. It's right there in front of you. You can't deny what you see. I didn't say you denied it. I said you refuse to accept that there is a difference. I don't deny it. I'm, I'm not stupid. We're not idiots. We're not, you know boneheaded and the things were done. I'm sorry if I'm talking too plain. Uh, I can see it, you know, but just because I see it doesn't mean that's the way that it is. I don't know about any of the rest of you, but I think, and certainly not putting out any kind of theories, but I don't think we know all the truth anyhow. There is truth that I do know. There is truth that I do know, and I, God said, when I want to talk to you, I will speak a word. Remember that what I want to what I want to get across to all of us, myself included. My God, I'm talking to me to, to, to today, today as well. I need to hear the Word of God. Sometimes when I'm reading, I don't just, I don't just open the Bible and start reading the words. I like, I like to say them while I'm reading them. I like to read out loud to myself so that I can hear the Word of God with my ears. I want it to get deep in my ears because... God said, I will come, I will speak a word. You'll, you'll hear a word in your ear saying, this is the way. Walk in it. But God, as I'm looking, that looks like the way I don't want to walk. Walk in it when God says walk in it. When you turn to the left or turn to the right, don't worry about what it looks like. Just walk because God said walk there. And there was a day that the children of Israel didn't want to walk straight ahead because the Red Sea was in their path. They couldn't turn around and go behind them because Pharaoh's army was there. But you see, what they didn't know was that when God told him to charge into the Red Sea, his plan was to part the water so they could cross on dry ground. The Egyptians didn't hear God say, pass through on dry ground. They just opened their eyes and saw as the children of Israel passed over on dry ground and they thought they could do it too. But the children of Israel were hearing the word of God and responding to their leader Moses as he stretched his staff out over the water and they passed through on dry ground. They were moving according to what the Lord had spoken to Moses. He spoke and then they saw and it was good. The Egyptians coming behind saw 
the Hebrews going across the dry uh, uh, red seabed thought they could do the same thing. They got all the way down inside it and God caused the water to destroy them. It's important that the Bible says that God will speak a word to us. Words are empowering. Words are, are, are they're, they're activators, especially when you're talking about the Word of God. Why is that important? It's important because when God said it and you repeat it, you get in agreement with God. And when you get in agreement with God, there's nothing that is impossible for you to do because all things are possible with God. With, with men, things are indeed impossible, but not with God because with God all things are possible. God said, I'm going to cause you to hear a word. I'm going to speak a word into your ear when you're going right and when you're going left, and you need to listen to that. Romans chapter 10 verse 17 tells us that faith comes by hearing. Romans chapter 10 verse 17 says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith comes by hearing hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Faith comes by hearing the Word of God. There is a Word that has been spoken. This is the Word that God has spoken. When we repeat this Word, we're speaking the words that God has spoken. Whether that's about salvation, sanctification, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, whether it's about healing, whether it's about your financial blessing, whatever that it is that God's Word has spoken, when we will hear that Word and speak that Word, then we're in line with heaven. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. It is important. Now let me talk to you as we, we shift into the personal realm of that. We, we, we've established that God is a speaker, that God is going to speak the Word, that God spoke the word. When God spoke, it happened. He saw that it was good. We found out that the devil's not too good in speaking. He'll show you something, try to get you to speak in agreement with what he shows you, and then it turns out not so good. We found out and we're finding out that God wants to speak his word to us. He's going to cause us to hear a word and that faith comes by hearing. In order to hear the word, you must, the word must be spoken. You're watching me or the recording of me wherever you are at whatever time that you're watching that. I suppose that tonight, today, whenever that time might be that you would do it, I suppose that I could have just walked in and stood behind the podium with the Bible in my hand and I could have, you know, had my notes before me and just stood here and thought the message for you. Uh, perhaps I'm standing too calm. Hold on, allow me to become more focused. I don't know if you know that or not, but I was straining very hard in thinking, seeing if I could get you to understand what I was saying. Without me speaking a word to you, yeah, I know, that's all right. You'll never think of me the same again, but that's okay. Without me speaking the word to you, it's absolutely useless. You've come for the Word. We need the Word. We didn't come to hear thoughts or try to get hold of a thought. I know that you had to think it to say it. I know all of those kind of things. But I'm telling you right now that we need to understand the importance of the power of the Word. Maybe tonight, maybe this morning, maybe tomorrow, maybe next week, whenever that you turn this on, you can, and perhaps it will pick your spirits up a little bit. Perhaps... It will change your viewpoint. Perhaps you will find Christ in it. Perhaps God will speak something to you that will mean something differently to you than even I have put out before you. But it's because a word of God activated something in you. God's word, when it is brought forth, will not return to him void. You must accomplish all that he sets out to do. But God won't move without a word. What about you and I? If we are Christians, and that, you know, generally to most of us broadly means that we're Christ-like, I've always noticed 
that people want to walk on the water with Peter to be like Jesus. People want to raise the dead. Uh, people want to do all kinds of mighty things. But how about just speaking like Jesus spoke? How about just speaking what Jesus spoke? We don't consider that being like Him, but I want you to know that when we hear His Word and we believe His Word and we speak His Word and we bring ourselves in line with His Word and we understand that God is speaking a Word to us, God not only wants us to have His written Word in front of us and before our eyes and in our ears and in our heart, but He wants to speak a Word. God's a personally active God. He wants you to hear his word, and when God speaks a word to you, it will activate something in you. Be careful because there's an enemy that's trying to do this. We understand that God speaks and then sees. God speaks to us and then allows us to see, and the enemy will cause us to see and then speak according to what he's shown us instead of what God is telling us. God will let you hear a word. There's a way out for you. There's, there's a way for you to be helped and the devil will show you every problem that you've got going on in your life and, 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 and then tell you there's no way out of it. God will tell you, I'm going to take care of your children. I know they're not exactly where they need to be right now, but I'm going to take care. He'll say, dear mother, I'm going to take care of that child. Dear grandmother, grandfather, I'm going to take care of that child. Dear father, I'm going to take care of that child for you. I'm going to heal your marriage. I'm going to heal your life. I'm going to bring you out of your addiction. I'm going to touch your life. I'm going to save your soul. God will tell you that. He'll begin to stir in you. It'll cause something to come in live you. The devil will show you every problem. He'll show you every mischief of that child. He'll show you your addiction stronger than it's ever been. He'll show you your finances worse than it's ever been and get you to look at that and then begin to say, even if you just say it in your heart, there's no help. Listen to me. Get to the place that you hear the Word of God. Open the Word of God. Get in the Word of God. Not only get it in your eyes, but let God speak in your heart because words are important. How important are your words? How important are my words? Proverbs chapter 18 verse 21 says this. Now listen to me, this is important. Proverbs 18 21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. I don't think there's anything stronger than life. As a matter of fact, I know there's nothing stronger than life because Jesus said, I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. He is life. So there's nothing stronger than life. But I want you to know that what we've been dealing with in all of this is the amount of deaths that have been going on. It could just be me. But I have noticed that everyone is forthcoming with how many people died and succumbed to the virus but they're not telling us about how many thousands have overcome and gotten life. It is important. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. I've, I've got to the place where I quit talking about the death and I start talking about the life. Thank God this many people have recovered. Thank God we got people that are not sick. With thank God. I, I'm speaking life instead of death. I'm not going to concentrate on the negative and the bad. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And my God, that's a whole message in of itself. It would take weeks of, of taking that apart layer by layer to get to it. Maybe we'll do it sometime. But death and life are in the power of the tongue. It's in the power of the spoken word. I've come to tell somebody tonight, to, today, this morning, whenever that you're listening to it, you'll live and not die. Somebody needs to know that. There are too many people telling folk they're going to die. No, 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 you live and not die because Jesus is Lord. Call on Him. He's a Savior. John chapter 15 verse 7 says, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. Jesus said if His words, what He's spoken, abides in you, and then you speak those words that you will have those things. I know that people want to listen to me. Uh, you know, if you, want to, if you want to not believe that words are that powerful, if you want to not believe it and you, want to, you just want to leave it all to chance, you go right ahead. You want to make fun of the people that are standing out there in the forefront 
declaring that there's life instead of death all around us. Now you go ahead and mock that, but I'm going to speak life and not death. Mark chapter 11, verses 22 through 24, I'm giving you examples of words that have been spoken that created life or death. So Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God or have the faith of God for assuredly, without doubt, for assuredly, most certainly, I say to you, he says to us, whoever says to the mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Do you believe that? That's the Word of God. It's directly from the pages of the Word of God. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, when you're praying, you're saying, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Oh, I know. Name it and claim it. And grab it and blab it. Uh, yeah, I know. I know that everyone thinks you know, there's just all kinds of false hope going on. Well, you call it what you want to call it but I'm going to speak life and I'm not giving up on it. I'm going to take hold of life and healing and health, happiness and wholeness and blessing, and I'm going to stand there because if I have to choose whether I'm going to feel positive, uplifted, and glorified today in Christ as compared to feeling dejected, rejected, downcast, and without God, no, I'm going to choose life every time. I'm going to speak the good instead of the bad, and I'm going to call things that be not as though they were and when someone's looking to die, I'm going to say, no, don't die. Come on, in the name of Jesus, live. Help us, God. Matthew 9, 20 through 22. Suddenly, a woman who had a flow of blood for 12 years came from behind and touched the hem of his garment, for she said to herself, for she said to herself, if only I may touch his garment, I shall be made well. But Jesus turned around when he saw her and said, be of good cheer, daughter. Your faith has made you well. And the woman was made whole from that hour. She said, and in this case, she said within herself, sometimes if and nobody else wants to hear what you got to say, you better say it in yourself. I'm going to tell you how good it was. Don't have time to go into this and take it apart tonight either. But there was no one else she could say it to. She had an issue of blood that caused her to have to be quarantined. She was locked up, quarantined, unable to go among the public and say she took her life in her hands to approach the master. But she said within herself, she said, she spoke the words, if I can but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made well. Somewhere she heard a word that said, touch the hem of his garment, and she said it, and she did it. And the moment that she touched the hem of his garment, virtue went out of him, power went out of Christ the Lord, our Savior, and she was immediately healed because she said, in accordance with what he said, and she received she didn't go by what she saw. She went by what she saw. She just saw a crowd and said, I'm not allowed to go among them because I'm quarantined. I'm in, I'm in bad shape. And I'm not suggesting anybody break a quarantine. Absolutely not. But I'm telling you, there's a time that you've got to say within yourself and you've got to touch Jesus because what he said. T t today, right now, where you are, what's going on in your life? Where are you right now? Are you a child of God that needs encouragement? Are, are you a child of God that needs lifted up? Have you been looking for the answer? You've been saying the wrong things. You've been doing the wrong things. You need to turn it around and come by the Word of God. Are you someone that doesn't even know the Lord today? Are you someone that has never called upon Him? You've got to speak a word to Him. Jesus, Lord of glory, come into my life. Save me. Heal me. Forgive me. I believe you died on that cross for me. I believe that you rose from the dead. I believe you forgave my sins. I come to you and I ask you to be the Lord and the Savior of my life. Somewhere tonight you need to hear a word. Somewhere today you need to hear a word. Somewhere next week, next month, you need to hear a word from God. And you need to believe that word. You need to understand that word. You need to let God take you in that word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You need to hear the word of God. 
Child of God, change your speech. Speak the word of God. Get up, get encouraged. Those of you that don't know the Lord, come to him, call upon him. He's already said that all that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Let's pray together. Pray with me right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to touch my heart and my life. I ask you, Lord God, to hear my heart's cry. God, I need you to touch me tonight. Jesus, I need you to lift me up today. Jesus, I need you to bless my life. Jesus, I need encouragement. Those that don't know him, Lord Jesus, I need you to come into my heart. I need you to change my life. I need you to forgive me. I need you to help me. I need your help. I need your help. And I'm calling on you. And I believe that you've spoken the word. And I'm hearing the word that you've spoken. I'm hearing the word that you've spoken. I've taken note of it. I've heard the word you've spoken. And I respond to that word. And then today I speak that word and I come in line with that word. And I ask you to heal me, ask you to deliver me, ask you to encourage me, ask you to save me, forgive me and help me. Be Lord of my life and help me to follow you faithfully. If you prayed with us, find a way. Get hold of some contact information. Let us know that you prayed. But you know what? If we never know it as long as as you tell somebody, let somebody know that heaven touched your life. That's all that matters. Change your words. This world is word activated because God made it so. Release your faith by your words. And God will bless you. Thank you for being with us. Pray to God that you've been blessed. Come join us again. When we're back together again, come and see us. But come join us again as long as we're doing virtual. We love you. We appreciate you. New covenant, we love you. God bless you. Look forward to seeing you all again soon. Have a great day.